So where we left off was I had left you in charge of downloading the data. So you should now have your own working code in here. Um, that's code that I'd like to evaluate, which was filling your array lists properly. Now, one thing that was brought to my attention looking at the code, um, when we graph these, they're usually graphed from oldest to newest. But when you download it, it downloads from newest to oldest. So one way of remedying this problem is to reverse the data in your arrays so that they're lined up properly for graphing. Um, and when we work with collections in Java, it's good for you to know about a particular class called collections. So I'm going to bring you there just for a, an aside. And in uh, this stage of our programming where uh, we're starting to you know, hopefully develop some better skills than beginners have, um, one thing we should do is not reinvent the wheel. We should learn to use libraries that are available. So the connection, sorry, the collections library uh, allows you to do certain algorithms on collections. So before I went and wrote any code for searching, sorting, reversing, whatever it is that you think you might want to try, this is probably the first place I would look. And lo and behold, down here, there is a method for reversing a list. So here it is. You stick your array list in, and it will reverse the list that's in there. So um, just use the built-in. The only time it's not acceptable to use the built-in is if I ask you to write the method. So at the end of your data, make sure you reverse it, because we're about to start talking about graphing here, and your graphs will be backwards if it's not reversed. OK, so. Um, Again, um, there's a few things that have happened in the background, and I will post the uh, uh, results of that to you. But basically, one of the things that we need to start here is we need um, a class that I'm going to call indicator. So um, I guess it's going to be, uh, you can try this instead. It's actually going to be a, an interface. So the interface is going to be called indicator. And when you build an, an interface, it basically defines what your object has to do. And this is going to be important because when we build an indicator, we will make it do these things. And Java then will allow you to hand off any indicator you want. I'm going to build one with you, but after we're done, we should be able to pool all of the classes together to use it. So the way you do this is you simply declare what happens. So I'm going to go like this and tell you a little bit about it while I'm uh, typing it. But what I should be able to ask my indicator is what is the underlying price? So an indicator is some sort of math that's done on a stock. The underlying stock is what I'm talking about here when I say underlying. So Apple computer might be worth $500, but its relative strength index might be worth 50. So to distinguish between the two, the underlying is the stock's price itself, the one you downloaded from Yahoo. Um, the parameter that I would give it is what day you want it. Um, another thing we would want is the, the uh, value of this indicator. So I'm going to say the same thing. I might want to be able to graph this indicator. I might want to do something with it. So I would like to know what is the value of the indicator on this day. And there's some other things that will be a good general purpose. You can add to this interface if you feel like you found a good reason to do so. Um, if it generated a buy signal, I'm going to ask, hey, it's Tuesday, February, well, I guess today's Monday, February uh, 24th. Did somebody say it's time to buy the stock? It'll say true or false whether that happened. And similarly, we'll have a sell signal. And I also want to know how much data is coming at me whenever I have an indicator. Because if I'm going to graph it, I need to know how much stuff I have to graph. And it's not always the same as the stock itself. If you have 100 data points on the stock, you may not have 100 data points of the indicator. So we do want to know how, much, uh, how big this indicator turned out to be. Um, and the uh, first thing I guess that I'm going to do is provide you with a driver class. Now my driver class is um, going to do this uh, sort of final project part of things for you. Um, actually, you know what? Why don't we have a little bit of fun with the graphical interface, and then it'll make more sense where, when I'm connecting the simulation up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here and uh, right-click on this and say New. 
And of all these things you can choose, today's gonna be our first day playing with the swing classes. So if you're wanting to know about documentation, how do I do this in Java? You're wanting tutorials, you're wanting to know more about the swing classes. So I'm gonna click on this JFrame here. A JFrame basically defines a container that I can stick components in. Components you know like buttons and text boxes, drop downs, you know, check boxes, all kinds of different uh, user interface components you're used to working with. And I'll just call this main window. And you're going to see it's a little bit different when you ask for a J frame. So you, instead of getting source code, this little graphical display shows up. Yeah, and what you can do actually is drag and drop your interface. So for example, maybe you just want a standard button. You can drop it in here. And here's a couple things for you to know about when you build it. Um, the first is, if you right click the properties panel, the properties are usually displayed here by default. That lets you do things like, for example, change the text. So instead of saying um, J button one, maybe I'm gonna put um, hello. And another thing that I might want to do is know what variable this, this represents. So if you right click on it, it says variable name. So let's call this hello button. And while you're doing all this visually, NetBeans is doing it in the background with the code. So we're going to talk first with NetBeans doing it for you. And then eventually in this project, we will do it uh, with the code by ourselves. So in here, what I'm going to do is go down to the text box. This one here, the text field. And when I drop it on the screen, um, you'll notice that it's trying to do lots of really nice alignments for me. Um, these are layouts. So if you're wondering, how do I make a certain kind of layout happen? Um, here's the different types of layouts you're going to want to dig into. We're using free design right now. Um, if you don't like how Java is trying to automatically decide for you, absolute layout just changes it. So now it just moves it around pixel by pixel and doesn't try to link anybody. This can be a little bit maddening because it doesn't line them up automatically like we just had it. But while you dig into that, and again, it's called a layout, free design is the one that's defaulted to in NetBeans. So this is all coded. If you do this at runtime, you can code it with a, uh, a swing layout class if you take a look in your uh, Sorry, I'm doing two things in one here. If you take a look in your documentation. So this box, I'm gonna delete that. I don't want any text in it, but I'm gonna resize it. I'll make it bigger. And I definitely want a variable name in here. So I'm gonna call this one, hello text. This gives me an idea that the button and the box are connected. And maybe you can guess what I'm gonna do at this point. It's probably the same thing a lot of you did for your first computer program, um, but that was, to make hello world appear when I click on that button. So here's how you do it with swing. And again, it's nice that it's visual, but we're gonna look at code now. Here's how you get to things a button can do. Down here it says events. You may say, um, I when someone hovers over this button, here's what I'd like to have happen. Maybe it changes color, maybe it disappears. All the different events that can happen are listed. And the default event when an action happens, so action performed, that's a click. So that's the one that we're going to use, and it automatically happens in NetBeans just by double clicking on the button. And it goes right there to the code. So this code, you can scroll through it all. You can have a look. There's the button, the hello button, the hello text that were declared. And even NetBeans is saying, don't change any of this because I've already done some coding for you, and you will wreck it all if you change it. So notice how it's all gray. It's gray on purpose to let you know this was generated. Don't mess with it. Um, even down here where it says generated code, if you hit the plus sign, this is all the different things that happen for you by NetBeans, okay? So don't worry too much about it while we're beginners. Eventually we'll be able to do it all at runtime. But right now it's nice that it can do that for us. And this is the method that I just created here hello button action performed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the text in my hello text. So hello text dot, 
and you'll get a bunch of options and the one that I want is set text So you might be saying, where did all that beautiful visual interface stuff go? I just had it, and now I'm back to the NetBeans that I know and that I loathe. It's all code, and I want to see this pretty interface. This is the trick up here, which is different about the JFrame. Up where the mouse is, this is the source view. This is the designer's view. So if you click design, it'll switch you back so you can keep designing your interface. So we've been talking about separating data from interface. Here's where you build your interface, and it should know nothing about the data that you're building on other than how it wishes to display that data. But it should not do any of the computation on that data. All it'll do is process the input you give it and display the output you give it. It doesn't know anything about what's happening. So far, that's true. Okay, so if I want to run this, uh, what you can do is there's this handy little preview button. All that'll do is preview the design. It doesn't link any of the code yet. It'll just let you see, okay, that's what it's going to look like when I run it. You can check on things like the tab orders. Maybe you don't like the way things are laid out, but that's basically a preview. The shift F6 is going to run the main program. And here's where main is defined in this file. See right there? That's your main method. Since this file has a main, I can shift F6 and up pops my window eventually. Eventually, <laughs> there it is. And when I click hello, hello world comes into the text box. Um, I can also use the value. I can get that value if I want. So for now, I'm just trying to whet your appetite, give you some idea of how this interface works. But basically, I just take one of my components and I can put it on my interface. Then I need to know how I'm gonna remember this one. So I'm going to now go like this, right click on my second text field, and I'm going to change the text. And I'm going to put a copy button here. So let's call this uh, copy text. And in my button up here, if I drop this one, and I will change this to just say copy. And again, it's trying to do nice things for me in the layout. Sometimes it's maddening because it's guessing wrong. But you know, it's not bad as far as it goes. Here's what I would like to have happen. I would like to take the text from this first box right here and copy it down to this box there. Basically, I want to show you how you access the information. So let's double click and that'll get me my method for when the button is uh, touched. And in here, what I'll do is say copy dot set the text. Uh, sorry, it's copy. I might not have. Uh, I think I changed the name. It's the problem of talking and coding at once. Yeah, it's there. Uh, maybe I'll make it consistent copy text. And I'll change this one too to copy button. So I'll go back to the code. You can double click it or you can click source. Remember that's how you toggle between them is up here. So under the source, I'm on copy button. So copy text dot set text. And the string that I want is actually in the hello text. But this is an error right now because remember hello text is not actually a string. The hello text is the component that holds the string. It's the text field. So what I do in there is I go hello text dot. And you notice some of the things in here is get text. Ooh, there's a happy one. Get selected text. So if you want to know what the user selected with the mouse, you can get it real quick that way. Uh, we don't want to know the name of it. We just want the text. So for now, I'm just trying to give you a basic sense. Here's how I get the user's value from that hello text button. So now when I run it, if I hit the first button that says hello, it's going to give me um, that text. It'll set that value in there. When I say copy, it'll pull that out and put it in the other box for me. 
So you can keep taking values out, putting them in. If you want, if they're numbers, you can convert them, format them if they're dates. Um, but uh, you will need to build your own interface to play with your data, the one that it loads in from Yahoo. So I'm going to stop this video here because I have an interface. It took me about half an hour to build all of it. And I don't want to waste your time dropping buttons and hooking up variables. I'll, I'll upload it to the site. So we're going to stop here. I'm going to skip that process and we'll reconvene at that spot, okay?